Have you ever wondered how parts are manufactured in the 21st century? Or how to manufacture a part using a CNC machine? Well, to find out more, watch this video. Hey guys, I'm MJ Sanger, your creative engineer. And today we're gonna explore the world of CNC machining. So over the past few months, I've been working with a CNC milling machine and I just wanted to share how to manufacture a part using this machine. Now, there are many of you who are gonna watch this video and know what a CNC machine is and what it does. But for most of you new engineers or newbies, I'll give you a simple background on how a CNC machine works. So then, CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. CNC machines are a form of manufacturing process that use computer-guided machinery to shape and cut materials. CNC machining mostly falls under subtractive manufacturing, where we have a material that we're going to create our part from. Now in the 21st century, CNC machining is used in various industries, mostly because we're aided by the computer to manufacture parts. With the help of CNC, companies are able to undergo automation in which they're able to create more than one part at a go. So then, there are different types of CNC machines that are used out there. There are CNC lathes, CNC milling, CNC drilling, and there are other CNC machines such as wire cutting and so on. But for this video, we're mostly going to focus on CNC milling. And because of that, we're gonna focus on some core principles that are used in CNC milling. And the first core principle is computer control. CNC milling begins with computer-aided design files that represent the parts to be created. The CAD model is converted into a CNC program, typically using computer-aided manufacturing software. The program contains instructions for the CNC machine to follow. Another core principle is precision tooling. CNC milling employs various cutting tools, such as end mills, drills, bone nose cutters, each chosen based on the material and desired outcome. The tool is mounted on the spindle of the CNC machine. Another thing to note about precision tooling is that we select the size of the tool depending on the size of the material that we're going to machine. So if it's a small material, we're going to use small tools with small diameters. But if it is a large material, to prevent our tool from breaking, we use bigger tools with bigger diameters and bigger sizes. The next is material fixturing. The workpiece, which can be a solid block or a pre-shaped component, is securely clamped to the machine's work table or vise. Proper fixturing is essential for stability during machining. You always have to ensure that before you machine, you make sure that your workpiece is clamped properly and tightly. If your workpiece is not clamped well, or properly tightened before machining. During the machining process, there's a high chance that your workpiece might move. This can affect the outcome of your machining process. Another core principle is the three axis movement. CNC machines are equipped with at least three axes of movement, the X, Y, and Z. More advanced machines have additional axes for flexibility. For example, the CNC machines that incorporate four and five axes. The extra four and five axis is the A and B axis that allow the workpiece to rotate as it's been machined. This allows you to machine very complex parts that you cannot do on a three axis CNC machine. And the last core principle that we should understand is automated operation. Once the CNC program is loaded, the machine follows a precise two path, moving the cutting along the X, Y, and Z axis according to the instructions of the program. This results in the removal of material in a controlled manner, shaping the workpiece. Now with these core principles, you have a firm understanding of how a CNC machine works. There are other core principles that I hope you can do your research on, and the more you understand how a CNC machine works, the more you also understand the safety and the precautions that need to be taken when doing CNC machining. So then, for most of you engineers out there, you might be wondering, why is CNC important? Can't I just get a manual industrial milling machine and use it to build my parts? Well, that is possible. And the more you practice on industrial milling machines, the more you improve your skill related to those machines. However, a CNC machine 
more especially in the 21st century, is very important. And I'll give you a few reasons why. One of the importance deals with consistency. One of the most significant advantages of CNC milling is its ability to produce consistent and identical parts over and over again. This consistency is essential in industries where uniformity and interchangeability of components are critical. Another advantage comes with complex geometries. CNC machines can produce intricate and complex shapes that would be extremely challenging or even impossible to achieve through manual machining methods. This capability is especially valuable in industries where intricate designs are common. For example, if a company is producing a complex geometry for one of their custom models of a car, a robot, or any product, using a manual industrial method would have a lot of trial and error. And having lots of trial and error is actually inconvenient when it comes to production because you're wasting material and also you're wasting time. So you have to note that when it comes to manufacturing a part, one thing that is important is time. How long it would take to manufacture that part? How long it would take to test that part and assemble it and use it in the real world? With CNC, we can remove the time it takes for trial and error by first going through the CAM software, which will give us a simulation of our manufactured part. And then if we like it, we can take it into the machine, manufacture the part, and then we can see where we went wrong in our designing. Another advantage deals with efficiency. CNC machines can operate continuously 24 seven, reducing production time and improving efficiency. They're not limited by operator fatigue or working hours. This leads to higher productivity and cost effectiveness. So there you have it, the importance and the advantages of CNC machining. However, before we go into how it actually works designing a part, I would like us to talk about a few things we should take note when doing CNC machining. This mostly involves using the right tools, the right speed, the right feed rate, and so on. Now, when it comes to tool life and tool wear, it is important when selecting the right tool for a specific material and application is crucial to extend the tool's lifespan and minimize tool wear. We need to note that the harder the material, the stronger the tool are going to need. Now, the impact on tool life and tool wear is that when using an improper tool, this can lead to an excessive wear, chipping, or even a catastrophic tool failure. Correct tool selection helps reduce tool replacement cost and downtime. Therefore, you need to note that since CNC machines themselves are expensive, so the tools themselves will also be expensive as well. So you also have to keep in mind to preserve the tool as you're machining. Next, we have to consider the surface finish and quality. It is important because the choice of tools, speeds and feeds directly affect the surface finish and quality of a machined part. It is quite all right for us to produce the part, but the packaging is also important. How the part will look will attract a lot of customers and investors for your product. Now the impact on surface finish and quality is that correct parameters result in a smoother surface finish and dimensional accuracy reducing the need for additional finishing processes and improving the overall part quality. Another one that we need to consider is the heat generation and thermal stress. This is important because inaccurate speed and feed rates can generate excess heat during machining. Because of friction, the metal will generate a lot of heat. So then we have to consider using coolants when machining our parts and we also have to use slow speeds when dealing with metal. The impacts of this is that the heat can cause thermal stress in the material. This can lead to dimensional inaccuracies, warping, or even structural damage. Proper speeds and feeds help control and dissipate heat effectively. You should also note that as you are machining your parts, you should have a basic background of engineering materials. This can help you decide on what speed and feed rate to use when machining your part. And lastly, we should also consider tool deflection. This is important because excessive tool deflection can occur if the feed rate is too high or the tool is improperly selected for the material. 
Its impact is important because tool deflection affects dimensional accuracy, surface finish, and tool life. Proper feeds and speeds can help minimize deflection, ensuring precise machining. So there you have it. The importance of CNC machining, its advantages, and a few things to consider when machining our parts. So then how do we use the CNC machine and what skills are required? Well, like I said before, you have to have an understanding of engineering materials. That's one. You have to know some CAD CAM softwares and you also have to be good when it comes to engineering design. Don't worry, these scenes are not born within us as engineers, but you learn them over time as you're doing the craft. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit a like and subscribe for more of my upcoming videos. So for this video, we're mostly going to focus on CNC milling machines. And to show you how this machine works, we're going to solve a problem. Like I said, as engineers, we are meant to solve problems. And to do that, we need to know the problem that we're solving. So we're going to design a simple cap for a water channel for a Mazda X5. One of the things we need to know is the material that we're going to use to make this cap with. So we're going to use a simple metal material, which would probably be mild steel, that would be strong enough to withstand the pressure of this cap and it won't easily deform with the heat that passes through this water channel. Now that we've selected our material, we then need to design the cap itself. So then, we know that there's already a water channel, part of the water channel, where the cap will fit in and be sealed into the adhesive. So we need to take measurements of where the cap will fit in and apply it into our design. So we go onto our CAD software. For this, we used SOLIDWORKS to design the simple cap. Next, we come to the CAM program. In the CAD software, that is where we design our 3D part with the specific dimensions that we have. Then comes the CAM software, which stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. In the CAM software, this is where we're going to make our needed two path and NC code that the machine will follow to manufacture the part. For this, I mostly use MasterCAM to design the part. And this is a simple simulation now then, if we are satisfied with the toolpath and the tools used, the feed rate and the speed of our CAM program, we can then generate the NC code. We need to note that when placing the type of tools used for each operation in our milling machining, we need to relate the tool size, meaning its dimension and length with the tools that we have. Improper tool sizes can affect the machining operation. Next, we then take our needed tools and clamp them onto our tool holder in the CNC machine. So afterwards, we then go to the machine setup. Since our tool path is ready, we then get the workpiece that we are going to focus on and then we clamp it onto our work vise. After that, we then create what is known as our workpiece zero coordinate. Because we deal with different materials, different workpieces, workpiece sizes and so on, they will have their own zero point axis. You need to note that where you've placed your zero point in the CAD software is where the zero point for your workpiece will be in the machining table. So then I've clamped my material. After I've done and written down the coordinates and done the needed mathematics, I then input the workpiece zero coordinates into the machine. After that is done, I then did an offset 50 millimeters above the workpiece to see if the tool has aligned with the workpiece and if there is any offset that will be needed to machine our part. If everything is okay, I then reduce the workpiece offset to zero and then start the machining process. So then, after our part is done being machined, we then need to cut it out of the material that was not machined. So 
So then now that our cap has been cut off from the material, we then go and improve its surface finish. You can just get some sandpaper and sand the surface of our cap. We then get our water channel and try to apply it on our workpiece. So then, as you can see in this video, it fits quite well without the need of an adhesive, but we're still gonna add an adhesive just for an extra layer of strength. So there you have it, a machined part from a CNC machine. Something so simple that you can easily do it by yourself. However, to improve your use in the CAM software, it's also good to practice once in a while machining parts that are a bit too complex. You need to know that the more challenging the scenario is, the more you're going to get out of it when it comes to learning and skill. I really hope you enjoyed this video and there'll be more machining parts that I'll probably show in my YouTube shorts. So why don't you hit that like button and subscribe for more of my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching, have a great week and see you again in my next upcoming video.